G'day guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to find the internal forces in every member of this truss assembly just here. This is a 300 Newton force, this is a 700 Newton force, and this is a 400 Newton force. Find the internal forces in each of these members and state whether they're in tension or compression. Okay, well hopefully you've had a shot at this yourself first, and now you're just looking at my solution. So here's what you should have done. Step one should have been to draw the free body diagram. So you wanna draw a free body diagram of this truss and replace these supports with external forces. So this is what it should look like. If this right here is our truss, just like this, I'm not much of an artist, but it looks something like this. And we've got an end bit just here. Okay, then we're gonna have a couple of forces. Let's start off with the pin supports. Because A is pinned, that means you're gonna have both a vertical and a horizontal force. I'll call this A Y and I will call this A X. Likewise, because this is also a roller support, you just have a vertical reaction force, which is going to be F Y, okay? Now, we also have a whole bunch of external forces acting on this thing. We've got the 300 Newton force, 400 and 700. So let me quickly draw them on. I'm just gonna choose a different color to distinguish them. This is gonna be 300 Newtons. This is going to be 700 Newtons down here. And this is going to be 400 Newtons just here. Okay, Newton, 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 fantastic. Okay, so that's step one done. Let's see if we can get involved in step two. So step two is to find the reaction forces. That's AY, AX, and FY. So let's do step two. So we've completed this. Step two is find reaction forces. Okay, so that means we need to find AX, AY, and FY. Let's do that. And the way we do it is by using the sum of forces acting on our truss in the X direction is equal to zero. The sum of forces acting in the Y direction on our truss is equal to zero. And the sum of moments about any point is gonna be equal to zero, right? And that's because our truss is neither accelerating nor rotating, so it, it abides by this. And, and this is the these are the three main equations you use for all of statics. But anyway, so we, we're gonna apply the sum of forces in the x direction first is equal to zero. What, is, what does that mean? Well, we've got ax to the right. So we've got ax to the right, so it's positive. I should clarify here that I'm abiding by this axis. This is what I'm gonna consider positive. This is what I'm gonna be considered positive, right? Positive to the right and positive upwards. So that's AX, positive because it's to the right. Then we've got plus 300. It's positive because it's also to the right. Now, are there any other forces which are acting in the horizontal plane or in the X direction? None, right? So we're done. And that means we can say that's equal to zero. Already, we found an answer. We found AX, that's the reaction force at A in the X direction, is equal to negative 300 newtons. Already we found an answer, so we're off to a good start. Now let's apply this one. Let's apply the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Okay, well we've got quite a few, so let's tackle this one by one. We know ay is in the positive y direction, so let's write that down. We know that's gonna be positive ay. Let's see, this 700 newton force is acting downwards, which is negative by our convention, so it's going to be minus 700. Right, This 400 Newton force is downward, so it's gonna be negative, so it's gonna be minus 400. And this Fy is positively upwards, so it's going to be positive uh, F subscript Y, and that's gonna be equal to zero. Let me draw that in white. I wanna keep the color consistency. And that's gonna be equal to zero. Okay, fantastic. There's not much we can do with this formula. We've got two unknowns in one equation here. We need something else. So let's let's, Ignore this for now and jump straight to the sum of moments about any point is equal to zero. So let's do the sum of moments about some point. I'm gonna choose point A is equal to zero. Now you could choose any point. I think you'd agree with me by the end of this video that A would have been the easiest one to choose, but don't feel constricted to that. You could have chosen D, B, C, E, F, or any other place on this entire free body diagram, really. Okay, so the sum of moments about point A. Well, we've got three forces down here which are gonna produce moments. All the others will produce no moments because they pass through point A. We've got this 700 Newton force acting downwards, right? So that will be positive by this convention. If I consider 
clockwise positive, then this 700 Newton force will produce a positive moment of 700 times by the perpendicular distance, which is this distance just here, which in this case is just four meters, right? We're also adding that to, we're adding that to 400, 400 times by its perpendicular distance, which is going to be four plus four, which is eight. Right? Notice what I've done here. The 700 Newton force will have a tendency to rotate um, this truss about point A, about point A in the positive clockwise direction. That's why it's positive. And what we do is we get the magnitude of the force and we times it by its perpendicular distance. That's all we're doing. Okay, let's apply this one more time. What's, what's Fy? Well, it's going to be negative by convention, so it's going to be minus Fy. It's negative because it produces a moment in the counterclockwise direction about point A. So it's going to be Fy times by its perpendicular distance, which will be, which will be 4 plus 4 plus, and this distance here is 4, so it's going to be 12. 12. And that's going to be equal to 0. It's going to be equal to zero. Notice that AX, AY, and this 300 Newton force do not provide any moments because they pass through point A, right? And, 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 that, and that's the main reason I chose point A, to, to simplify the work. Okay, so if we were to plug this to our calculator, what will we get? We will get FY. We will get FY is equal to 500 Newtons. That's from solving this equation above. Right, so we found Fy, which means then that we can now find Ay from that. We can actually plug in Fy is equal to 500 to solve this, and you will get 600 Newtons. Fantastic. All right, so so far we've already found our reaction forces. We found Ax, we found Ay, and we found Fy. These are the only reaction forces we have. We're done. That's good. Now we're ready to start in the meat of the question. Now we're ready to start analyzing individual joints to determine what the internal forces are. So let's write this down. Let's write this down as step three is to analyze, analyze a joint. And it's up to me which joint I choose, but I will choose joint A because I think it will be the easiest. It, either joint A or joint F would be the easiest because we already know a lot of the forces acting on them and there's only two members at a time we need to analyze. Okay, so now we're analyzing joint A. All we need to do now is draw a free body diagram of the joint. So if, watch this closely, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to focus on this section of our truss and I'm going to make cuts here and here and I'm going to replace the pin support with external forces you've got just here. So this is what the free body diagram will look like. It'll look like this. We'll have our normal member, AB and AD and we've made a cut just along here, a finite size cut just along there. And because we've made a cut, the internal forces now will be popping out. This will be the internal force AB, and this right here, let me, let me zoom out a little bit to make some space. And this right here will be the internal force AD, okay? Not only that, but we also have some other external forces because we've replaced the pin with, this, with, with these forces. We need to draw them on too. This is going to be AX, and this right here will be a y. Okay, we're not completely done with the information of the free body diagram. This is at some arbitrary looking angle. So let's let's call this angle theta and find out what it is. Well, this angle here is that same angle. So this is going to be theta. And what's that? Well, um, let's see if I can find some space. I'll probably write it down here. If we create a triangle between a, b, and d, it looks like this, where this is theta. This right here is a length of three. This right here is a length of four, which means that tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is three on four, which means theta is equal to inverse tan three on four, which is equal to 36.87 degrees. Okay, we're gonna be using that soon. So when we're analyzing a joint, what we need to do is we need to take the sum of forces in the x direction and the sum of sorry, forces in the x direction and the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero and apply them simultaneously. So let's do this one at a time. So, so we're gonna start with, um, let, me, let me scroll down a little bit. We're gonna start with the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero is equal to zero. Well, we've got AX in the positive X direction, so let's write this down as AX. 
We've also got AB in the positive x direction, so that's going to be plus AB. And we've also got the component of AD in the x direction as well, right? And I, I won't do this for every single joint, but just, just for this first one, AD is at this angle just here, which means it has a horizontal component just here and a vertical component just here. And if this is theta, if this is theta and this is AD, that means the vertical, the, sorry, the horizontal component is going to be AD times by cosine theta. That's from trigonometry, right? It's the length of this side. So that means we're going to be adding that to the component of AD in the horizontal direction, which is going to be AD cosine, cosine theta. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So that's the horizontal direction sorted. We can't do much with this. We've got two unknowns and one equation. Oh, and that's equal to zero. So we might need some help from another equation. Let's do the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Well, we've got a y in the positive y direction. That's going to be plus a y. We've also got a d, or at least the component of a d, in the negative y direction. So that's going to be minus a d sine theta, sine theta. It's sine theta because that's the component of AD in the y direction. And that's going to be equal to zero. All right, when you solve for this, we can simply say that AD is going to be equal to AY on sine theta. We've already found AY here. So when you plug this into your calculator, you're just going to get AD. AD is going to be equal to, let's see, it will be 600 divided by sine 36.87, which is exactly 1,000 newtons. Okay, now this is the tricky part. Is it in tension or is it in compression? Well, we've assumed here that AD is in tension because it's popping out and going this way. If it was in the other direction, it would be compression. And because it's turned out to be a positive value, that means it really is in tension, okay? Notice if AD was negative, that would mean that our assumption was wrong and this thing would actually be facing the other way, which means it would be, in fact, in compression. Okay, we're ready for the final part here. Now let's find AB using this equation now that we found AD. Well, let's solve for AB. We know that AB is going to be equal to minus AD, which is 1,000, we just calculated it, times by cosine theta times by cosine theta, minus ax, minus ax. And if you were to plug that into your calculator, this is what you'd get. You would get minus 1,000 times by cosine 36.87 minus negative 300. So let me write this out value for value. This would be minus 1,000 cosine 36.87 minus minus, or if I could just write plus 300. Right? And when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to be left with minus 500 newtons. That's A, B. Now, can I ask, is this going to be in compression or is it going to be in tension? Well, notice here, I assumed that it was in tension because it was popping out this way, right? Because it's negative, that means A, B is actually facing the other way, which means it is really in compression. Okay, guys, I think that's this first part of this video sorted. I'm probably going to do this in a series of videos. Hopefully, this made sense. Um, come along to the next video so I can solve for each of the other forces in this. Cheers, guys.